race fans, this is Mark Cipollone from AutoRacing1.com, reporting to you live from New Jersey. And this week we're going to talk about what's happened the past week. Well, there's been a lot of good things going on. Of course, the uh, North American International Auto Show um, is underway. Uh, I call it the Detroit Auto, Auto Show, where um, all of the car manufacturers are there showing off their latest uh, um, cars and also concepts for the future. Uh, the one thing surprising this year is that there wasn't a whole lot of there was a lot of exciting stuff coming from the internal combustion world. Um, you know, all the manufacturers are putting all their research and development dollars, almost all of it, into electric cars. And so the ones who had something to show were there and uh, showed um, you know, some of their new cars, uh, like the Chevy Bolt, which won the car of the year uh, for the show. And um, but you know, Nissan had a great uh, car out. Uh, the E-Motion, and BMW announced that all their M-Series, which are their high-performance cars, are going to be electric in the future. We talked about electric last week, and as you know, um, you know that's the future. There's no question about it. Um, not only do the cars have more torque, more power, um, and now with the new batteries coming out, uh, it's just a matter of time before um, electric cars are going to be the norm on the highways. Um, Dakar, Stephane Peter Hansel won for the 13th time. My hat's off to him. He's won six times, I believe, on bikes and now seven times in cars. I don't think anybody's going to touch that record. Um, he was driving for the Peugeot team, which finished one, two, three. So, yes, he had a great team, but he beat Sebastian Loeb, which, who's a great rally driver. And, um, you know, my hat's off to the guy. He's a real deal. Um, IndyCar. IndyCar had some news this week. Um, they announced that Dallara would be the engine supplier through the 2020 season. And on top of that, um, they announced that they would put out a bid for a new car for the 2021 or 2022 season. Remains to be seen what that's going to be look like. Um, they also announced that, or they showed some artist renderings of the body kit that they want to put on the cars, the standard body kit for all the uh, teams and manufacturers starting in 2018 and that's going to be put out for bid soon for uh, a whole host of companies that are interested in supplying that body kit. So um, it's going to look more like an old, a champ car did um, without the, um, the air intake behind the driver. Um, the engines are turbocharged now. They don't need to have the air, air intake above the driver's head um, and they're just trying to make the car look better overall which makes sense. Uh, they're not looking for speed. Uh, the cars are not going to be faster because of the new body kits. They're just looking for good racing. So they're going to focus, IndyCar is focusing on putting on a good race, a good passing, a good show. Meanwhile, F1 has gone to wider tires and more downforce, which is going to ruin the show. Yes, it's going to make the cars faster um, and they'll you know, break track records and it's going to take a, a, physically, it's going to be harder on the drivers. But as far as a show for the fans, there's going to probably be less passing because with more downforce and wider tires, the braking distances, which already are too short, are going to be even shorter yet, which means that the chances of overtaking, which is where most of the overtaking happens in F1, is going to be slim to none. So um, I don't think they're doing themselves any, any good with moving towards uh, wider tires, but that's what they did. So. Anyway, I think IndyCar is doing the right thing, focusing on making the racing good rather than speed. The, um, they also uh, talked about um, talking to new engine manufacturers and hoping to get one or two new engine manufacturers in the series. Probably, um, maybe with the new body kit in 2018, but if not, uh, I suspect they're hoping to get something for 2021 when the new car comes out. But they've been talking about that for a while, and I don't know, unless they get those TV ratings up, you know, I'm not sure any engine manufacturer is going to, going to you know, jump in. But let's hope. Uh, let's see, what else? IndyCar, I guess that's it for IndyCar. Oh, they talked about no rush to implement a halo device to protect the driver's head. Um, I think they should just wait for the new car in 2021, design something properly. If it was up to us, it would be a, a full canopy with an air conditioning system to keep the driver cool, to keep fog off the windshield. Um, and it would have, you know, emergency, uh, you know, fire extinguishers in, in case there was a fire. We don't see much fire these days. 
our opinion is the time, the number of times a driver has to jump out of the car because of fire these days is almost none. The safety crew is always there to get the driver out. So what are we doing? We're not putting a full canopy on, which will save the driver from being killed or having a serious head injury, which happens far more often than the driver having to get out on his own without the safety crew being there. The safety crew is always there. So what are we doing, guys? Put the canopy on the car, design, it, design for it. It looks great. And the driver will be safer, and the safety crews will be there for them. And just do it right. It can be done. Engineers are, are good. Smart, smart people. Anyway, changing to Formula One. It looks like Botas is, is almost definite at Mercedes now. Uh, this week was announced Patty Lowe had signed with Williams, had left Mercedes to go with Williams. That was one of the trade-offs that Williams wanted to give, give, to give up Botas. They also want free engines for the year. And so that negoti negotiation is still ongoing, um, and they haven't announced Botas officially yet, but we expect that to happen um, maybe this week or, the ne or next week at the latest. Um, we ex also expect Philippe Massa will come out of retirement for one year to fill in for Botas, and he's going to probably want some decent money. So um, what's, what's going to be interesting is what's going to happen after that one year when Botas goes back to Williams who's going to take his place at Mercedes. Sebastian Vettel is rumored to be unhappy at Ferrari because the Ferrari car is not designed by Aldo Costa or Adrian Newey, so he knows now that the chances of him winning a championship at Ferrari are probably slim to none. There's no way you're going to beat those two designers. It's, I, I doubt it anyway. I'd be surprised. So uh, rumors are he wants to get back to a winning car. Aldo Costa is the best designer in F1. You know, he, he designed all the cars for Michael Schumacher. They were unbeatable. And now he's you know, with Mercedes and you know, Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. They've had a field day. Nobody could touch the cars. So um, you know, every, every driver wants to get in, that, in one of those cars. And I guess we're going to see if uh, Vettel goes to Mercedes. I don't see him and Hamilton being teammates, but one never knows. Um, it could possibly happen. Um, there's also rumors that Hamilton may go back to McLaren to replace um, Fernando Alonso, who's getting up on age, and you know he may be looking to retire at some point. So remains to be seen. Um, the other news in, in F1 is the Matter team is close to going bankrupt. They're, they've got two weeks of money left before um, the current owner is folded up, and you know the team's way off pace. Uh, they, they're going to need hundreds of millions of dollars to turn that team around to make them competitive. So if they do find a buyer, it's going to have to be somebody with deep pockets who wants to put a lot of money into the team to make it into a winning team again. So it remains to be seen whether they can do that. NASCAR, let's talk about NASCAR. The big news was Carl Edwards retiring this year. Similar to Nico, Nico Rosberg, out of the blue, he just decided that family and his, and his health are more important, and they just didn't want to do it full time anymore. So um, he's out. Um, it remains to be seen whether or not um, you know, he drives something else in the future, whether it be part-time or some other series. Time will tell, I guess. Um, replacing him in the, in the Joe Gibbs Toyota will be um, Daniel Suarez, which is great for the NASCAR's diversity program. So I don't think NASCAR is too upset about that. But they are losing the driver with a lot of fan base, and so that's going to be a little bit of a hit. The other news in NASCAR was they're going to allow Fitbits now on the drivers so they can um, record biometric data during the race. Not allowed to transmit it back to the uh, pits live during the race, but it, they can record the information. Um, so drivers might be wearing Fitbits or things of that nature in the future. Uh, they also announced that the rear spoiler would be reduced in size from 3.5 inches to 2.5 inches which is going to take a fair amount of downforce off the back of the car, making them a little bit more loose, harder to drive, requiring more driver skill. We think it's great. Um, let's hope that, that, that the racing is still good. It may, we don't know. We'll see if it helps the racing or hurts the racing. NASCAR likes close racing, um, and so does its fans. So if, if it keeps the cars close and puts more skill back in the drivers, then I think um, it'll be a positive thing. They also announced that the roof hatch for emergency exits um, is mandatory at Talladega and Daytona starting this year. 
but optional at all the other tracks. And the other announcement they made this week was that the restrictor plate diameter will be reduced by 1 64th of an inch. That's to keep the speeds in check. NASCAR never likes the speeds to get much above 200 miles an hour for safety reasons at, at Talladega and Daytona. So uh, as the engine, uh, engine designers get more horsepower from the engines, NASCAR keeps on reducing the size of that diameter of that hole for less and less air to try to keep those speeds in check. And last, it's a little bit of a um, complaint that we have with the Indy 500. The biggest race of the year, on the, it's been running for 100 years, and the trophy they give out is, is ridiculous. This week, uh, this past year's winner, Alexander Rossi, and team owners Michael Andretti and Brian Herter each received their Borg Warner Trophy replicas. Now, we've seen you know, trophies from other lesser races, which are huge in size, and they give out this little Borg Warner um, replica. It's so small, it's, they should be ashamed of, them, of themselves. Come on, guys, you could, you could afford something a little bit bigger than that. Anyway, that's it for AutoRacing1.com. Join us next week where we'll be from live from Miami, Florida at the Race of Champions where American drivers will be going up against the best international drivers in the world for um, claim to the being um, the, you know, the best in the world. And it's a, it should be a great event. And we'll have some more news from that event next week from AutoRacing1.com.